Uh, and this is when Randy Orton seemed to be a temperamental individual at certain points. He's the best. But what was it like getting to work with him? Because I assume that he's the sort of guy that's going to really make sure that all you guys do is, is aces. Um, he took legacy really seriously. He brought us up in the stands. This is why I want to call it legacy. This is what we stand for. He gave us some terrible advice, which was, you're going to be in some main event positions. Act like it. And if, you, if the guys in the back don't like it, f- like, so now, like, he kind of he kind of said essentially if you're disliked in the back a little bit that's okay that's don't tell me that at that age because then I like you know I might as well have been wearing a fur coat to TV like I was just, I took it to my straight to my head um, great teacher uh, for all his temperamental BS um, he's everybody has a Randy Orton freakouts moment but when he brings you into his little nest you're like his like his little young. He takes he takes care of you. So you, I my poor wife barely knew Randy, and they didn't have salsa one morning at breakfast, and she asked for it. And when the guy kind of broken English said we don't have it, you would have thought you would have thought he like called her a bitch or something. Randy like slammed his hands on the table. What do you mean you don't have it? You get in that kitchen. <laughs> Just like, and she was so like, oh, it's Randy Orton, like you know. Um, yeah, so he um, he's the best. I I mean, do I have time for like a particular Randy story? Yes, you do. Okay, I'll tell two Randy stories, and if you repeat these stories, please repeat them in full because he will text me and not be happy if they're not correct. And um, so my very first night ever on the road. Uh, I haven't debuted on television yet, and I am at the live events. I get a live event match against Davari. And uh, I'm all excited. It's my birthday, too. So it's my birthday, and oh, I'm going to wrestle, and there's thousands of people and not 40. And uh, anyways, Davari grabs me, and he literally just goes, mum, 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 and shoots me to the ropes. And whenever you hear, mum, 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 don't come back running. So I just come back running. <laughs> And he puts his elbow, and there's a little Harry Potter scar still there. He puts his elbow here, and it just a flap of skin just peeled off. And I thought, oh, I'm bleeding. How cool. I'm a wrestler now. Like, how cool. And then all of a sudden, I see it squirt. And, like, I look at my boots, and they're covered, and I only have one pair of boots. So I was like, uh-oh, like, trouble. So anyways, we finished the match, and, like, everyone's, like, backstage just disgusted. Like, no one's enjoying this manly moment they're just disgusted with me i was like it's not my fault but i guess it was um so we didn't have a doctor at the time wwe had uh local docs and the guy who stitched me up his name was the hip-hop doc (laughs) and i should have known then like let's go to the hospital um but he stitched me up with these cable stitches so i have these massive not micro stitches not staples massive stitches in my face like Frankenstein and they're running all the way down my nose and I'm supposed to debut Monday so fast forward Randy finds out it's my birthday and he says hey it's your birthday you know well uh let's let's take you out let's go to like a strip club it's your birthday right it's you know little did I know he didn't give a damn about my birthday he just wanted to go to a strip club (laughs) and uh I'm sitting in the back seat, and uh, he's up in the passenger seat. Santino Morella's in the driver's seat. And he goes, you know, with a cut like that, two things you should do. Tan, because that'll help it heal, which is terrible advice, because if you tan, it will scar. He says, tan, that'll help it heal. And stick your head out the window and get some air on that. (laughs) Sure thing, Randy. So going about 80 miles per hour, I stick my head out and literally... Three of the staples pop, or the stitches pop, and there's just blood running down my face, and I'm just, I don't want to go to the strip club. <laughs> I don't want to go. And we pull up, and I'm thinking, man, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an adult. Just let me dry. Like, I'll go back. I'll come back and get you guys. You have a good time. It's like, no, no, it's your birthday, right? <sighs> Gets out. There's a guy like, hey, you can't park here. He goes, no, Todd, Todd. The guy goes, what? And he goes, Chris, the manager, Chris. And the guy goes, Yeah. He said we could park here. So he's just making names up and got it right. And the guy's like, oh, okay. We go in and they recognize Randy. So they like put us upstairs. 
And I'm just watching Randy like get a lap dance and like no one's paying any attention to me. And I was like, this sucks. And then like this one stripper just keeps like <laughs> looking at me and it's like, there's blood running down my face and she brought me a couple like cocktail napkins like to like wipe it off. I was like, this is so embarrassing. The night ended essentially with Randy goes, hey, you wanna see my best Brock Lesnar impersonation? Picks up this stripper, just in an upstairs, just like this, does like a half F5 <laughs> and uh, and she like is screaming for dear life. He's like, no, I got you, I got you. And I like, he sets her back down. I'm like, what if you didn't have her? Like, what, 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 what is the point? Like, why? And I remember I actually in that moment, that's where me and Randy's relationship truly developed. I said, you know what, dude, we're leaving. And that became me and Randy. For whatever reason, he would look to me in moments of true lunacy. <laughs> and I, in the, in the, triumvirate of the legacy. Teddy loved to party, casual, friends with everybody. Randy, we already know all about him. I became the adult. And I loved it. I loved it. And when, when Vince needed to talk to all three of us, I'd get a text. Get your boys together. <laughs> like, I'm the, you know, and uh, yeah, no, so that was, I, I owe, if there's any, like, two particular guys in WWE who I owe my, like, career to, one is Randy Orton, one is Rey Mysterio. Um, Randy Orton, just I couldn't, I couldn't have it without him. Like I, I love that guy to, to absolute death. He's he's wonderful and he's temperamental as hell. And the it's, it's just wonderful. You ever get a chance to see it? Just if it's not you, it's fun to watch. I love the idea that people are going to go home tonight and on Twitter there's going to be a headline: Randy Orton F fives a stripper. <laughs> We've created I mean, that tonight, ladies and gentlemen. I know he tipped her really well, and like she obviously didn't fall. Otherwise, this is not a story I would tell. But that was the moment. And we had many moments like that where, okay, throwing M80s off the balcony in Mexico is different than throwing like small firecrackers, guys. These look like dynamite, and there's cops down there. So let's, let's reel it in. And you had a second Randy Orton story that you wanted to tell. I mean, if I, did I take too much time with the first one? No. Okay, this is just, okay, this is, this is just everybody, he does this now on purpose, but he used to not. We do shows over here in the UK, and we have the worst catering ever, and it's not because the food over here sucks, it's because they try to make the food like we want it. So they make like hamburgers, like I guess American style, they do just chicken, fish, like vegetables, no sauce, no seasoning, it's really bizarre. However, Randy, after every show, likes ice cream and what flavor that's where it gets tricky it just needs to be present chocolate vanilla strawberry the combo it has to be present if it's not present you'll see him just get up you'll see him walk in the back of the area we're not supposed to be in you'll see a conversation go on he'll come back out usually the ice cream comes back out if they don't have it though it's the biggest f***ing temper tantrum you have ever seen <laughs> in your life. And I, I can't get into all of them specifically. I've seen a guy make him the most beautiful plate of ice cream ever that had garnishes on it. And because it had garnishes on it, he legit, what is this? <laughs> this is disgusting. <laughs> like, and on the garnish one in specific, I looked at him, I go, what is wrong with you? And he goes, oh, the, the S.H.I.E.L.D. guys haven't seen it. I'm just showing them. <laughs> like, that's not funny. Like, you know. like yeah. So if, if you're around, he loves ice cream. And hopefully every hotel has it at this juncture. It's just, they always get him the ice cream. That's for sure. Just better for everyone involved. Yeah, right. it, really, it really is. Like, just get him the damn ice cream. <laughs> now, yeah. something, obviously, social media is a big thing now. And on Twitter... Everybody talks about everything. You know, if Roman Reigns has a new color on his vest, people are analyzing yep. it. But something about your career that a lot of people used to talk about was the lack of knee pads. Oh, yeah. For a long time. And all of a sudden, well, now they just came out with knee pads. What was the mindset between... between I sold out. Like I sold out. I should have never put them on. Um, I was getting into a more, like, different style wrestling-wise. I wanted to advance my game. Like, I didn't want to just oh, I do these things well, I'm going to do these. I wanted to, especially I was working with guys like Daniel Bryan and stuff at the time, so I was like, well, I want to go. 
I want to do, and I might need him for this. And I kept watching like Muda do the moonsault over and over again. And now Muda kind of has like the Shawn Michaels walk. So I was like, well, maybe I'll put the, maybe I'll put the knee pads on. The whole point for no knee pads and my trunks were a quarter of an inch higher. The whole point was I saw a picture of Buddy Rogers and I thought that's what a wrestler is supposed to look like. Like the strong man, like just, I, I don't know, like something about that picture stuck with me. So I always pushed it. However, I didn't look nothing like Buddy Rogers. And like when I would look at it on TV, it was just, Ooh, like I could have done so many more things, but I, I never hurt my knees in the period of time. I don't, uh, I thought it would differentiate me. I guess it kind of did. Um, but then I sold out, put the knee pads on and now I have like the biggest knee sleeves ever. Like Booker T once told me like that it, it was just uncomfortable to watch me put all my knee stuff on now. They're like this big, just whatever. I sold out.